On the agenda is the director's report. Okay. Um, first, uh, let me report to you on uh, what the council actions have been at their recent meetings. Uh, they have had one meeting since you last met. Uh, they, their July 7th meeting was canceled, so they had one meeting on July 21st. Uh, they did a number of things uh, planning related. Uh, first of all, they uh, voted on the development agreement for the marketplace development and uh, on a two to three vote with council members Asher, Donahue, and Martinez voting no and Vice Mayor Davis and Mayor Atkin voting yes. The council declined to approve the development agreement, the proposed development agreement for the marketplace. This uh, development agreement was, as you may recall, was recommended by the Planning Commission for approval at your June 25th meeting. And as the Commission is aware, the agreement called for affordable units within the project rather than payment of the affordable housing impact fee, and it also had provisions regarding unit mix, family-friendly design, public art, timing of the various phases of the project, and authorizing the city manager to approve the various land swaps and easements required for the project. The issues of affordability, parking, the land swap realignment, and unit mix were all raised by the council in their deliberations and factored into their vote. The sense of the council in voting against the development agreement was that they wanted more affordable units in the project. This council decision on the development agreement should have no bearing on the commission's ability to make a decision on the final development plan for parcel A tonight. Another item was the Shell Mound Street vacation, which is related to the marketplace. The council considered the proposal to vacate the portion of Shell Mound Street that will be abandoned when the street is realigned as part of the marketplace project, and they declined to take action on that item. This street vacation would not have taken effect until after the Planning Commission approved the tentative map for the marketplace, which is tentatively scheduled for your next meeting in August, and the new alignment is constructed. The street vacation will thus need to be approved at a future date. The Council's non-action on the street vacation should likewise have no bearing on the Commission's ability to make a decision on the final development plan for Parcel A tonight. Concerning safe routes to transit, the council accepted as complete the safe routes to transit improvements at the Star intersection, which is where um, San Pablo, Adeline, and West MacArthur all come together. These improvements feature improved crosswalks and the city's first bicycle left turn lane and bicycle signals. So that uh, long-awaited improvement of that intersection is all finished now. The council approved a contract for the cleanup of the 3706 San Pablo Avenue site. This is the first step in constructing this 100% affordable housing project that was approved by the commission in January. The council considered and gave direction for the design of the swimming pool deck at the Emeryville Center of Community Life, ECCL, adjacent to the future bike path along the west side of the property. The council agreed with the concept of a pinch point for the bike path adjacent to the pool and also suggested a more transparent fence between the pool and bike path with a new sound wall on the Emory Bay Village property line and a control joint in the pool deck to make it its later removal easier if it's decided in the future to provide for a wider bike path. The, this um, council uh, direction was advisory to the school board which will ultimately make the decision on all of these things. The council approved the first reading of an ordinance that allows for an expedited process for building permits for solar panels on single family homes and duplexes. This is a state mandate. Um, this will result, although this involves very few permits every year, it will result in the city's ability now to accept online applications for all types of planning and building permits, including payment by credit card, which currently is not an option. So uh, this is an impetus for a much bigger improvement in the way we process things. Finally, at Council Member Asher's request, an item was listed on the Council's July 21st agenda to consider initiating an amendment to the planning regulations to modify the appeal period for Planning Commission decisions. In lieu of initiating such an amendment, the Council Member requested an informational report for the September 1st Council meeting summarizing the appeal periods and procedures of Oakland, Berkeley, Alameda, and Albany, which of course we will provide. And in other news, 
Um, yesterday, we issued the grading permit for the remediation of the mound site, which is the surface parking lot next to the Amtrak station. So all the parking has been relocated off that site, and there's a fence around it, but you haven't seen any activity out there quite yet because they didn't have a permit yet. Now they have a grading permit, and you'll see, see things start to happen there. This is the first step in the construction of the long-awaited Emory Station West Transit Center project. We expect to receive a building permit application for the podium in August and for the tower in November and construction of the podium is scheduled to start before the end of this year. That concludes my report and I'd be happy to respond to any questions you may have. Charlie, so when you when you mentioned that the development agreement or its lack of approval doesn't impact our decisions tonight, I know that there are components of the development agreement that relate to unit types, etc. So is it safe to say that the proposals before us tonight are devoid of any you know, impact from the development agreement when it comes to unit types, family, number of family friendly well, units? Well, yes. Currently, I mean, unless it, uh, the, the development agreement or some uh, variation of it is ultimately approved by the city council, uh, then it would not alter uh, the FDPs that you have already approved or may approve tonight. So if I could dovetail on that. So the development agreement was essentially going to be an overlay um, over the um, FDPs that you had already approved and the FDP that you're considering tonight as to parcel A. So to the extent that the development agreement had, um, you know, was, was affecting uh, unit mix and type um, and number, um, those changes would have occurred had the development agreement been approved. So to the extent that it has not been approved, uh, that overlay doesn't exist, and the FDPs that you had already approved as to parcels C and D and then are considering for t tonight will stand as approved um, previously and, and as approved tonight. I ask a clarifying question on that. Um, I, I totally understand the overlay situation and the, the difference between the FDP approval and the um, development agreement. I believe that they are independent in inherently, um, but you know, since we're on this topic, I'll just ask the question. I mean, my my concern is having watched the video of the city council proceeding on this topic. Is the city council was rather explicit that they were? Uh, I mean, they withheld the the approval for the realignment of the street, and to me, it was a expression of a desire to get something back. Um, get something back in exchange for entitlements and so um, I'm just I'm just curious you know your your comment at the very beginning I just want to be clear you know it says it should have no bearing is is that to say that there's no direction from the City Council to consider what they said or is that to say what they said about the entitlements um, that, that were not allowed not not given to the developer for the street or is that to say um, that we don't have a clear order from them to to move with that. I just want to be clear as to what well that factor is. The council doesn't direct the planning commission as to what to do. You advise the council on certain things, and um, other things you have uh, you make decisions on, like final development plans that can be appealed to the city council. Um, but. I mean, there was no direction to the commission from the council as to how to uh, go about approving or di not approving the FTP that's before you tonight. Um, and I don't think any of us should try to read their minds as to what they intend. Uh, you have before you a uh, properly noticed and filed application for a final development plan, and it's the commission's uh, really obligation and duty to hear the testimony and then make a decision on that FTP. I'll also add that um, you'll recall that the purview of the Planning Commission is to comment on design, 
um, on um, general plan consistency, uh, on the findings that you're required to make in approving the FDP. Um, there were issues in the development agreement that are outside of the purview of the Planning Commission, namely the fiscal impacts, for example. Um, those those areas were not part are not part of your consideration. Um, so. To the extent that the application that you'll have before you tonight uh, uh, relates to the design features, uh, circulation flow, that sort of thing um, of the um, of the project, you certainly have the ability to comment on that. Uh, you know, to to weigh in on that and um, and express your opinions and, and vote on it. Um, but. Um, as to the other aspects of the of the of the development agreement, um, which were not part of your purview to consider, um, you know, we're not asking you uh, to to you know weigh your decision tonight on the parcel A FDP in relation to that. Any other questions? So, Mr. Ryan, I just want to ask you a quick clarifying question. Um, did you say that for the development agreement? Um, the city council's concern was regarding the lack of aff more, lacking more affordable units, or more family friendly units, or both. Um, I, well, they mentioned both, but my understanding was. That